I forgot to mention one safety tip, and it works out nicely because it kind of flows out of the scripture. One of the other things, uh, we have the air conditioning on, which, thanks be to God, not only makes the church a little cooler, but what it also does, it's not dramatic. Probably can't see it happening. I'm sure we can't. And maybe it, 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 it doesn't solve it, but helps. It moves the air. And they say the best way would be outside because that's the safest place, distanced and have the air flowing around you. The droplets get moved all over. And so uh, same is true here. Uh, not dramatically, but in a very simple, quiet, soft way, that movement of the air probably is a healthier thing for us. Now, I mention it because um, like this ceremony of confirmation, I will say a prayer, we'll all extend hands over you in prayer, and you'll hear the seven gifts of the Spirit, which I'm going to mention in just a second, and then we'll put oil on you, and you're gonna, I'm going to say whatever, Felix, Receive, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit, and your response is, amen. Okay, three times is a charm. Felix, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Felix, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. I'll change the name time, this time. Clotilda, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Okay, that's your response. And then I'll give you the gift of peace. Peace be with you. And you can respond to that also with you and with your spirit. You too, whatever, okay? So you'll receive the gift of the Spirit and then the gift of peace. The gifts of the Spirit, they come out of Scripture. And uh, I've got them here on my phone. So they're, um, these are what they are. We're praying today that the, the Spirit would gift you with these gifts. And by the way, you already have these gifts. It's not that you don't have them, but through the outpouring and anointing with the Holy Spirit, the prayer of this community of faith, we're believing that something is going to happen deeper, deeper, that you will receive the gift of wisdom, understanding, counsel, fortitude, knowledge, piety, and fear of the Lord. Okay? And you can get these later. Just say, hey, Siri, uh, give me the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Well, she did it earlier. That's all right. You don't have to do it again, honey. Okay. This day is about you getting gifts. Like I said, it would be absurd to give you seven gifts all wrapped up beautifully, but you never open them. And wouldn't, wouldn't the, 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 you become a fool if, let's say, one day you ended up uh, your house got taken from you or burned down and you were living in a car and you lost your job and all this stuff, but somehow miraculously you had gathered together these seven little packages, gifts that you never opened. They're 20 years old. So you've been living in the car. You've just been miserable for the last years. And I say to you one day, what are those gifts? Oh, I got them about 20 years ago. Why didn't you open them? Oh, I don't know. I just didn't. That's crazy. Open them now. And you're completely poor. And you open up, in each gift, there's $100,000. And so you have $700,000, and it could have served you beautifully, but you never opened the gifts. Now, although that's unlikely, I'll tell you, every single person in this, in this room today has gifts galore. We just graduated a class from our school, and there's a boy in the class who graduated. He's got a beautiful voice. And... He's saying almost every Thursday and one Sunday a month uh, when the school came. And every time I heard him sing, I just said, oh, my God, that kid, he, he has got a possible future with that voice. So I tell him all the time, I say, you've got a voice, use it. Take some lessons. Practice. Get a teacher. Because I know something about music, and I can tell when a voice is really rich. And this kid at 14... He's had a change of his voice, but he's got a voice. And I relate to it personally because I was blessed. I, I'm a musician. Joe's a musician. He's a better musician. He, I read music. He reads music, but he also knows chords. Those chords he plays, he wrote that music. He knows chords. I don't. He knows how they're structured, how they're written. He knows dominant chords and all this stuff, knowledge I never got because he went and took music and got a degree in it. He's got a developed gift. Mine is partially developed. His is really finely developed. When I was 
in seventh grade, first of all, when I was in fourth grade, I got in the boy choir at St. Charles, blessed with an incredible director, Paul Solomonovich, who since has died, who had a passion for music and was able to uh, pass it on to me. And just, oh man, I loved singing with that man in the choir. So in seventh grade, I got chosen with some other classmates to uh, sing in an opera, actually two operas, Carmen by Bizet and Tosca by Puccini, my favorite. And uh, we sang it at the Wiltshire Bell and was with full orchestra and all these uh, opera singers and all, all the opera sets and on stage and lighting and oh, it was glorious. Then in eighth grade, I got to sing it for three nights at uh, um, the Greek theater with a full orchestra, a whole stage, with Dorothy Kirsten singing. It was just ah, magic. Plus, in eighth grade, I got to be the star of a, an opera called The Mall and the Night Visitors. It was a simple little uh, production in San Bernardino, but I actually signed autographs, you know, wow. Then I went to the seminary, and every single day, every morning and evening, and during the mass, I played music on the piano or the organ. And, and I got to develop my gift. Um, what helped also was that people came along and noticed it over the years and encouraged me. I even ended up in a movie. Now, you won't know this star, but I was, I was co-starring with Betty Davis in a movie called Dead Ringer. And I was only on the screen for like seven seconds. We were singing around her graveside, and we walked away in procession singing. Got a hundred bucks that day. A hundred bucks. And every year, every time it played on television, even till the present day, I get money from it. And that was when I was in eighth grade, 1958. So I said to myself, God, no, I'm 64, I'm sorry. I said to myself, wow, what an incredible blessing. I had a gift, not an enormous one, an average gift, a, a lot of passion around it, but I had people come along and bless me, noticing it and encouraging it. So I said, I have to pay it forward. And that kid, and I told him, go get some, some lessons. Go on, develop that gift, you've got it. It's in that context I want to say to you, you've all got gifts. You've got the seven gifts I just named. You've all got them. You've all got knowledge. But, you know, sometimes we can have great knowledge and not know very much, you know? We, we have the knowledge, but we just, we don't stop and think it through and integrate it and, and ask questions to deepen the knowledge. But with knowledge, there's another gift that's really key, very important, called wisdom. And a lot of people don't even think about it. They think of a wise owl or a child wise beyond his or her years. But wisdom is a way of knowing that's very important. For example, um, you know you've been hearing that line out on the streets, Black Lives Matter. And uh, the big difference this year is that a lot of white people are out there with those signs shouting it right next to black folk. White people, brown people shouting it, Asian people. Five years ago, if a white person walked out there, because that saying's been around for a few years, five years ago, if a white person went out there with a sign saying Black Lives Matter, I bet you they wouldn't have been very well received. They might have been thought as mocking it, or, you know, who are you? You're, what, what do you want, Whitey? What, 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 you don't have anything to say about this. But now, black people are saying, thank you. We need white people to walk with us and say the same thing. It's much more powerful that white people are saying that black people matter too. I guess you could call that there's a source of wisdom there. Because, you know, we can know that something is right, know that it should be said, but the wisdom says, who should say it among the three of us? When should it get said? In what kind of a setting should it be said? Those are questions of wisdom. So even if you have a lot of knowledge, you may not have the gift of wisdom to know when the right time or the right place, uh, when it is uh, and the right person that should be saying the thing. So for example, your teenagers. Um, you may have some things to say to your parents sometimes. It really would be good to open up the gift that we are blessing you with today in this consecratory prayer. 
the gift of wisdom and ask God, God, I'm going to ask you, fill me with your wisdom. Is this the right day to approach my dad or mom with this? God, fill me with your wisdom. What do I need to ask myself before I open my mouth? The gift of wisdom is really a guide that can make a huge difference about the careful way that we do things. Today, as you receive these gifts, like I said, in 10 minutes, it's going to be gone. It's over. And you won't see outwardly the effect because we're praying through an anointing prayer, the oil that gets put on your head, and the oil's a symbol because the oil gets absorbed into your skin. And the symbol is, as we know that, I put oil on your forehead, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit, that you've accepted it. Yes, amen, so be it. I want to be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit and the gifts that the Spirit brings. Now it's for you to develop them. Like I had the opportunity, Joe had the opportunity to develop the, the gift of music. To take those gifts, pray them every day, ask for them especially when you need them, use them and be grateful for them when you use them. These gifts are useless unless you use them. And like some people say with language, you know, you learn a language as a kid, some people don't speak it for 20 years, and then when they want to speak it, they don't remember much. And they say, you know, I kind of lost that language. I lost it. I, I didn't use it. These gifts can be lost because we don't believe in them or use them and ask for them. Today, take these gifts Receive them with a strong amen. Open your heart and soul to them. And then every single day, sometime in your morning, noon, or night when you pray, thank God for the gifts and say, God, continue to pour those gifts over me and into me so that I can become the very, 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 very best person that I can possibly be.